Do you guys want to see some really cool snake enclosure inspiration? I've come all the way to just outside Philadelphia with my friend here to visit her uh, snake enclosures. And she has a lot of snakes and she has some of the coolest enclosures. You may have seen them if you follow her as the curly haired keeper on social media. But today we're going to take a deep dive and not only look at really cool enclosures, but some awesome snakes. This is Abby. I'm Bob. And welcome to Green Room Pythons. I think there's a logo here somewhere. Do you see a logo? So, oh, here it is, right? Oh, look at this little one. She's not so little. April O'Neil. Yeah, she's April, Oh, that's April O'Neil. She's, she's our 50% coyote. Yeah, she's our 50% coyote. Abby. Yes. How, okay, so you and your husband, Jody, who we're gonna meet in a minute, uh, both have these snakes. Who had snakes first? Who, who was the snake person? You, you, it was you. Me. He's he has always been interested in like lizards and stuff. Uh -huh. But I was definitely the one that got us into all, all the situation. All the all the snakes. <laughs> yes. Cool. And uh, did you start off like bioactive and doing all this cool stuff? You just you just started. This. Yeah, I I stumbled upon Tanner's channel yeah and um serpent designs Surfer for, designs for anyone i don't know why yeah. you wouldn't know who he is but just in case um and fell in love with his designs and i was like i want to do that for a snake and talked to a couple people who were like that's not going to work because it's a snake they don't do well in bioactives like i'm gonna try it anyway because that's just right. yeah and, yeah, and, and kinda... you and i've i've tried it with with one of my ball pythons mm -hmm. and what i always tell people is it's an experiment, and it's, it's a, the snake does fine. The plants don't always do fine. Sometimes you got to replace plants, yep. but you do it better than I do. So we're going to take a look at. Let's start off with Stella. So before we dig into this enclosure, real quick, Jody. Hello, sir. Uh, just to be clear, which one of you is the curly-haired keeper? Uh, oh, she is. Oh, it's her. Oh, it is. It is. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, Pre no appreciate that. Let it clear that up. So, Abby, this is. Uh, you said this is a twelve by two cage. Twelve by four by. 30 inches deep. Oh, by 30 inches deep. Yep. Okay, by four feet high. Yep. For Stella, who is a pretty big snake, but small for reticulated pythons. Mm -hmm. She's she's a super dwarf, but still big girl. Yep. And uh, so you were talking to me about this last night because I always say that, that heavy-bodied snakes can destroy plants. So if you have a bioactive, you got to replace plants a lot. Yep. Uh, how do you get around this? So I haven't had to replace her plants at all. Almost a year. Um, shelves and branches. So, Alternate climbing options. They usually take it if they are sturdier than the plants themselves. So you've done this a lot smarter than I've done mine by just putting a branch up the plant. So obviously they're going to choose the branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really smart. And here you've got a bunch of cork bark on this. And this, what, what is this plant? That is a ZZ plant. And it looks like it can be crushed anyway. Like... It's not going anywhere. Yeah. So you've got that plant. You've got this hide box here. Shelf. More plants over there. Just. Giant cork bark. Just yeah. incredible. And then we've got Miss Stella. Twelve foot girl. She's twelve feet. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Let's look at some other cages. This is the, this is the biggest one, right? This is the biggest one. Who's this one? This is Aries. Aries. Hi, don't come out. I know. So, your snakes are all very well socialized, mm -hmm. and uh, it's because you do choice-based handling for the most part, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I can go in and get them if I need to. Uh, they're all very, very tractable. But yeah, I just I mess with them all of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're used to it. That's what I do as well. I, yeah. I'm all for choice-based, but I don't do 100% choice-based. Mm -hmm. I find that if you do mostly choice-based when they're young, then you can go in and grab them and they're not worried about yep. it. Yep, they trust you. So look at that boy. So what's he all about? He is also 50% super dwarf. He's mixed locale, so we don't know which island his parents came from. We just know that they were super dwarf islands. Um, he is a visual annery het purple albino. He is the dad to Stella's clutch um, from her maternal incubation journey. So that's, a th okay, let's talk about that for a yeah. second. Stella just maternally incubated your first clutch of snakes, right? <laughs> and so you've got this clutch, which we're going to look at later. Yep. But Aries is the dad. Aries is the dad. Okay, great. Yep. We just saw the mom and the dad. Then we're going to look at some other snakes. Then we're going to look at that clutch. Yeah. All of these cages are bioactive. Mm -hmm. Jody, 
Yes, sir. Uh, what's, what's your favorite snake in here? How could I possibly choose? <laughs> what, are, what are some of your favorites? What are your thoughts on a favorite? Um, it, it's, it's honestly such a hard decision. Um, I mean, right here is Ivy. She's our Colombian rainbow boa. She was our very first snake. So she will always hold a special place in our hearts just for being our first. Um, up here is Law, our, um, one of our boa imperators. She's an IMG labyrinth. This is one of your only non-bioactive cages, but still really nicely done enclosures with still a live plant, right? That's yeah. a live... <laughs> yes. Yeah. We can't help ourselves. So you've got some fake plants <laughs> and a live plant. Yep. Still a really nicely done enclosure. So the hides are cork bark hides for mm -hmm. most of these snakes. Are you mixing your own soil for these enclosures? Yep. Yeah, we do topsoil, sand, uh, mulch, and fag. So it's a one to one to one to two ratio. It's Tanner's recipe for dirt is, is the one Oh, okay. I You're just yeah. using what Tanner, yeah. yeah. I use what, what Tanner recommended. Um, and then I mix in some charcoal and leaf litter. And that's, that's about it. It's nice. Cool. It seems to work so well. It really does, yeah. Here, he's, he's, boy. Boy. he's beautiful. He is. What's his uh, situation? He is a VPIT pause snow. He is three this year. Uh, yeah. mm. He's a decently sized male. <laughs> yeah. Look at the speckling on this snake, you guys. What a beautiful boa. We're going to be looking at mostly dwarf and super dwarf reticulated pythons in this video, so. He's good to bring a boa out. You know what it reminds me of? Like sepia tone newsprint. Kind of. That's great. What a beauty. Hi there, young man. Did you tell me last night that this is a two year old snake? Yes. Yeah. She turned two in March. And who's she? That is Centauri. She is a platinum anery tiger and had purple albino. Very silvery eyes, so we named her after uh, the next closest star. Love it. Look at your dirt face. Oh no. You got a dirty face. Oh no. She's so proud of it too. Dirty face snake. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? She's a quirky girl. Yeah? She, uh, she's the opposite of most snakes. So if I go in from here, she'll like be like, eh. You can go in and like, touch the top of her head and she doesn't care. Really? It's so weird. She just doesn't want her chin yep. messed with. It's so funky. Now come all the way up in. So she's definitely due for an upgrade. So that'll be in the works soon. Oh, tiny girl. Come here. Yeah, she's probably, she's a little over five feet, I think, last time I measured her. Tell me about the upkeep on these enclosures. You're not doing full cleanouts because they're all bioactive, mm -hmm. which is so great. Is there tons of plant upkeep? What, what are you doing? Not really. Um, I mean, if they kill a plant, which happens, um, I'll replace it. But for the most part, the plants have been doing pretty good. We change waters every day to every other day. Um, they are, if they peat like the shelves, you can see this, if she peed on it a little bit. Um, I'll need to wipe those down a couple times a week and then once every like six months I'll refresh the substrate and by refresh I mean just add a little bit more and mix it in right and that tends to do the, the trick so so pretty easy upkeep mm -hmm. on these so you guys we're going to talk about this snake as we scroll the horde of keepers uh, who are the people that help me take trips like this and support the channel thanks so much to them Abby, tell us why Garrett is so mad that he sold you this snake. It's just his favorite. He likes her patterning. She's an orange glow, but she's like sunshine yellow. And yeah. She is absolutely beautiful. She's, she's like she's a gorgeous girl. yellow and orange and purple, it seems like. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the camera can see it. Yeah. But uh, so Garrett sold you this snake, and then as it grew up, he's regretting it. <laughs> yep. When her neck is yellow. Like underneath. Like underneath? Mm -hmm. Wow. What a beautiful snake. And what's her percentages? She is 37.5% Champ, 25% Kalatoa, um, and she's just from very small bloodlines. So, because she's, she's two. <laughs> beautiful. Two year old retake. You're so tiny, huh? Sweet girl. Hey, you guys, also check out the channel sponsors right here, right on my left. Maybe you're right. I don't know, but they're, yeah, they're right here. Over there. 
check that and look at those discount codes. Come on, can't beat that, right? Just like disembodied and <laughs> extra pointer. So she is a little underweight still from doing MI. MI being maternal incubation. So she went off food, I, I would assume, right around the time she ovulated. She actually did not go off food until a couple weeks before she laid. Oh my gosh. So that's, wow. that's what I was like, are you gravid? I don't know if you're gravid, but sure enough. Um, and then she went off food for the majority of the time she was on her egg. So she uh, she went a couple months, two, two and a half months, and yeah. then like that without food. Yeah, she went yeah. into MI weighing about 40 pounds, and she came out weighing 17. Oh my gosh. So she lost quite a bit of weight. Wow. Um, so she never looked like sick, but she was definitely like, got very tiny. But that eggs. happens, you know, when they lay eggs, they they become a flat tire, basically. Yep. So she's still, she's still gaining her weight back yep. from that. Yeah, she's right around 23 now. She, you know, reticulated pythons are so skinny. Even mm -hmm. even if she gained the weight back, she's still a skinny snake. Yeah. Long, like twelve feet long. This snake is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and she does not feel like like the people that I've had hold her. They're like, are you sure she's twelve feet? I thought twelve feet would be more. Yeah. But she's. She's also very docile, so that helps. Well, we've also seen people, you know, super dwarf and dwarf reticulated python keepers who have a 10 to 12 foot snake mm -hmm. that's way fatter. Yes. Yeah, and the mainlands also tend to be a little bit heavier. Sure, yeah, the mainlands definitely. So, yeah. definitely, like, that super dwarf helps. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I could hold her like this for a very long time. Yeah, especially if she yeah. distributes her weight twice mm -hmm. around your waist. Yep. Let's look at some of Stella's babies. Oh, this guy, this guy's out. He's awake. I mean, this is a ton of plants. So I'm guessing that you're propagating your own plants. Some of them are in pots. Yeah, so some of those are mine. There's no snakes. So oh, no this, snake in these? This boy went home last night, um, and there's no snakes in here right now, so I'm literally just using it as a oh, nursery I see. for plants. A lot of times what we'll do for the volume of plants is we'll, you know, go to a nursery and get one potted snake plant and then split that into kind of smaller, mm -hmm. you know, right. smaller plants and distribute and the And the snake plant is this. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times those in the pot, they're separate, right? Mm -hmm. They're right. separate anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. Kind of individual stocks. Yep. Right. Yeah, so it's really easy to break them apart. Uh, look at this little guy. Oh my gosh. That's huge. <laughs> so these are, and oh, you've also named them all, yeah. which, which I don't do because it's hard. It's too hard for me to to, to find see them. them go. No, not to find homes for them. It's hard for me to see them go. Let them go to new yeah. homes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it makes me sad if I name them because then it's like it's mine. But these are all annery, right? They, all of them are visual annery. Some of them are platy annery. He's a motley annery. Um, we have. Platy motley anneries, and we have snows and platy motley snows. So it was a fun like variety of aesthetics. Yeah. And uh, again, these guys are all like they're they're all pretty well socialized mm -hmm. already. They're not afraid of anything because you've done choice based handling. But I also think it's because you know when I have babies in tubs and I open a tub that startles the baby because mm -hmm. their entire enclosure is, is moving. And then the big monkey is right there. Right. So we have to get them past that. And there's ways to do it. You know, you be very careful and you do the techniques that I talk about in my videos, showing them your hands, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But with this, they can see what's going on in the room. And initially that might be scary for them. So you give them cork bark and whatever to hide in, but then they get used to their environment. You're not going to scare them. You're not going to run up to a cage and go, ah, you know, yeah. like, there's no startling them. Yeah, and honestly, like, some of them, like, they'll just be out all the time. They don't want to hide. Yeah, yeah, like, they just like this one right, right here. So that one's just out. She never hides. Never hides. Never hides. Just happy Even to be she's sitting on her shelf. Even and eating, she's on her shelf. Wow. I mean, you've done it right. Your first clutch, okay. you did it right. Look at this one. Oh, my gosh. Handsome. The platy Montley Snow. Yeah, he's our whole back oh, boy. On. Hi, buddy. So you're keeping this guy. Mm -hmm. Hi, handsome. But we do do things like this where I'll just stick my hand in and let them think about it. But they're all very reluctant to strike. Yeah. Even if they're like, oh, what's happening? Hi, buddy. 
He's probably one of our shyest ones. And he's he's coming out of his shell though. Nice choice for a holdback. Thanks. I mean, like the camera can't, he's so light. Mm -hmm. The camera's having a hard time picking up the patterning, but I can't yeah. if I come close. Wow. Doesn't help that we're the same color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where genetics always like are really fun because this is the same mom and dad. I know, isn't that amazing? Like, they come out of the same clutch yeah. and they look like that. Yeah. Boys. What a great way to come into the world, these snakes. Lucky snakes. <laughs> Lucky us, they've been awesome. Like, we really lucked out with our first clutch. Like, doing MI and having that many babies hatch and all healthy, all wonderful personalities. And yeah. Obviously, very pretty. <laughs> yeah, and you're also in no rush to sell these, too, right? Like, you said that however long it takes. Mm -hmm. So you can be a little choosy as to who you sell to. You're not going to sell to somebody who's going to turn around and throw them in a rack. Right. Um, yeah, we do have an application process that we go through for the babies just to ensure that people know what they're getting themselves into if they want a super dwarf retic because they are, they're, a, they just hit different. Yeah. When, you know, when you have them in your care. So especially yeah. when they're really well socialized. Also, I should say that Baby retics do very well in small tub situations because they just want to hide generally. But clearly they also do well in a bioactive. But my point is that if they start out in a bioactive like this, you don't want to go to a tub from there. You know, like starting out in a tub, they can go anywhere from there. But if they start out here, they should be at least in something similar or better you know whatever yeah. bigger you know as they grow yeah and i guess the opposite is true too like if you have a snake that's used to a tub and used to something really small if you throw them in a you know six foot long enclosure they're probably right like, that's what is happening that could be problematic yeah. yeah so you want to so starting off you want the snake to be in at least what they were in before mm -hmm. or or maybe a little bit bigger yeah something like that but uh but you don't want to go backwards yeah so yeah. you know somebody that's buying a snake from you guys will they'll know what the snake is used to mm -hmm. you know and so the keeper yeah. can sort of do the do a similar thing yeah i have a feeling these babies would drive anybody crazy if they were kept in tubs just because they would be pushing and muck up their face yes right 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 yeah hi little one abby and jody thanks for having me over yeah this is so cool yeah, to see your setups it. and see how you work with your snakes and the results of when you work with snakes like this so where can people find you? The curly haired keeper dot com. Mm -hmm. That's our the website. Curly haired keeper dot com. Yep. Uh, the curly haired keeper on Instagram, TikTok. Not. I do have a TikTok. I never use it. I'm so in, on it. Instagram is the main. Instagram and YouTube are the and two YouTube. main. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the two okay. main things. Uh, and there's a lot of really cool content on there. Thanks. Hey everybody, Future Bob here. I'm just editing this video, and I want to say that when I went to Abby and Jody's place uh, initially. It was to sort of showcase snakes that have been raised and, and brought up using some of the same socialization techniques that I use, uh, which is really cool. They've done a fantastic job uh, with the way they work with their snakes. But, you know, these bioactive enclosures, it, the video kind of turned into a bioactive enclosure video, uh, which they've done such an incredible job. But my point here in cutting in is I just want to say, don't feel bad if you can't do that, especially if you're having your first clutch of snakes and you can't give each one a bioactive enclosure. I don't want you to feel bad. I think that, you know, this is showcasing the top level if you can do it. But if you can't, you know, give them whatever enrichment you can give them and they're going to be fine. Like I said earlier in the video, snakes do really well in tubs too. We just have to do some things a little bit extra to socialize them. Anyway, now let's watch me try to do a super awkward sign off. Okay, we did it. We, we showed it. your stuff. I appreciate it. We did it. Bye everybody. <laughs> See you next week. I didn't know how to do a sign off. That's I forgot how to do a sign off. <laughs> <laughs>